Today we're at Jake's house and we're gonna be talking about basements and really why it's so expensive to build basements and how we protect worker safety while we're digging a giant hole. So let's get into it. Today, we're gonna to be talking to Craig Novak, who's a project manager for this project. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about the kind of excavation for a basement. Now, Craig, I see that we have a giant hole here, and I see that in some portions of this hole, it's a big slope all the way down to the ground, but in the other portions of the project, it's actually stopping five or six feet above the ground. Can you explain what that, uh, what the difference is there? So we, we establish our shoring plan based on our soils reports. What type of layers are there into the earth? What's shoring though? Shoring is a way, a means to brace the earth from sloughing. And depending on the depth of the excavation, we have to bring shoring up to a certain distance for that protection. Uh, for example, on this site, we're using an OSHA cut where we have enough distance to the property line to allow us to cut all the way to the base of our future or foundation. What's an OSHA cut? What does OSHA stand for? Uh, Occupational Safety and Health. It's a, it's a department of uh, regulatory support for worker safety. Mm, okay. So we have an OSHA cut here at the back of the property and that goes all the way down to the ground, but we don't have it over here behind us. So how come? So on this side of the property, we were able to bring the shoring up to a specific height and then make an OSHA cut back towards the property line that is acceptable for traversing above it uh, so the workers can walk above. And we provide enough distance off of the foundation at the base so the workers are safe in the deepest point of the foundation. Okay. So how come you couldn't just slope it like you did in the back all the way back? Did it have something to do with the fence or the house next door? Uh, partially because of the fence, even though this needs to be replaced, it's a, it's a matter of permission from a neighbor and going through all those exercises and risk because then you're starting to assume oh. risk for the neighbor's house and their property. So it's best to do all the work on your own lot. Okay, so what is the shoring? I know it's covered up in plastic because we've been having atmospheric rivers here for what seems like months um, and it's covered up in plastic, but what is actually the shoring here? So the shoring's made up of uh, steel I-beams and then what's called lagging, which is a uh, pressure treated beams that are slid into that space. And it's uh, rated for holding up that amount of soil. So the lagging is actually dug probably twice as far down as it is uh, exposed. And then there's a concrete base poured in there. So it, it keeps that pressure held by the ground itself. And then the plastic, because of the atmospheric river and the amount of rain we have, the plastic keeps the soil dry above so that it doesn't become saturated and then would slough. Oh, okay. So then the I-beams are like 12 feet long or how long are those I-beams? These I-beams are about 18 feet long and they're exposed for about eight feet above ground. So we have 10 feet of steel in the ground that's surrounded by concrete holding these up. Correct. Wow. So is that the only type of shoring that we're going to see on projects like this? No, there's different types. They could do a, um, a stitch pier where they'll bring columns closer together and then they don't have the amount of lagging necessary okay. to do the same work, but it's more expensive. So this is optimal for this site okay. and allows us to have those channels for the workers to walk through. Okay, so then how long are these shoring beams gonna uh, stay here? These are permanent. So in this instance, these, these are poured in place and it would be impossible to remove with any type of crane once the building is established. So these are just left in the ground. Uh, because of this site ha has an interesting aspect of the shortwave radio antenna, the owner is going to be able to use the shoring columns as ground rods for uh, lightning um, safety. Oh, so is the shoring required for the foundation strength or is it completely independent of the foundation strength? Absolutely independent. So the foundation is designed to hold the earth around the perimeter. So if it could have been built as we are doing in the back, we don't need shoring to protect the foundation. Okay, so the shoring stays there forever. It never gets removed, but it has really no impact on the structure of the foundation itself. Correct. Okay, so then uh, how long uh, is it going to be in place, like there in the ground? And is it gonna cause the homeowner any problems? No, it shouldn't, especially when it's this low. We have a different type of shoring in the front of the property okay. that's called blindside. So we had to do some pr tree protection and we weren't able to over excavate to build a foundation because of the root uh, zone. So in that instance, that shoring actually becomes part of the formwork 
and it does stay in place against the concrete. Okay. So with this being a passive house, we have a series of insulation measures and waterproofing that had to be built in place to create those protections prior to the pour. Okay. Whereas on these walls, we'll be able to do a different approach to our insulation. So that's why we have a space between the shoring and the wall is for insulation and waterproofing against these foundation walls. But the foundation walls uh, next to the tree, there's no space there. So the, pl the waterproofing and the foundation insulation are already there. Correct, because of the limited access towards the tree. So we didn't over excavate in those instances, whereas in the back here, we were able to over excavate as far as we needed to get an OSHA cut to the base of the foundation. Okay, so then this all sounds like really expensive. And how does this impact the cost of the basement? I know that basements are already expensive and we're here in a kind of a high density residential area. And I know that uh, basements in our area are incredibly expensive, not only because we have to get rid of the dirt, but because we have to do shoring a lot around the adjacent houses to protect them. Like, what does this add? Like, not in a, in a total unit cost because that's kind of confidential, but like on a linear foot basis when we're putting shoring in, like how do we price that out? In this instance, because we were able to modify the shoring around the sides and lower, lower the height, we, we had some savings there. Um, uh, overall, I'd say we're 10% of the complete basement installation cost. Okay. So just to have those protective measures uh, is actually a very worthwhile exercise. Okay. And it all comes back to what type of soil do you have on the site? Okay. So the shoring then is there to keep the tall, rigid wall from kind of poking up so that if rain comes and that falls down, it could theoretically crush uh, a worker. Absolutely. Okay. So we're, we're required to prevent uh, injury or death. Okay, so then we're required by who to put shoring in these jobs? By OSHA to create work, safe workspaces Okay. For everybody involved. And then can we just go and, and put the shoring in place or do we have to get like a special engineer to draw up the shoring plans and develop this whole thing? Correct. So on this project, we actually had a a soils engineer that is a shoring engineer. So he's able to take the report that he has in place and he's an expert. So then make that plan according to the installation here on this project. Okay. So the last question is, does the, I know that we do what are called um, soil boring logs or actually drilling a hole in the ground and then sending it to a fact, uh, laboratory to analyze the dirt and the, and the kind of characteristics of the dirt. And I know here we had like a three foot layer of sand in that column of dirt. How did that impact the uh, ability or requirement for the OSHA cut in the shoring? That actually was the driver. So especially on this side, on the south side of the property, there is that sand layer. And if that becomes saturated, it can actually undermine this OSHA cut on the top. So that had to be supported in order for this remaining OSHA cut to, to have its support uh, on the frame of the shoring it below. Okay, so it's really important for us to get that civil engineer or geotechnical engineering uh, kind of investigation of the soil to make sure that we're not ever putting in, uh, anybody at risk in one of these jobs. Correct, so the, they, they make core samples and they're able to investigate every layer, typically down to 22 feet or so. Okay, that's, that's great. So here again, we're talking about, you know, digging the foundation in the basement. And the first thing we have to do is dig a hole before we can put a basement. And we're gonna talk a lot more about what we need to do for basements. But in general, now you have an understanding of how we have to dig and how we have to secure the site so that we are protecting worker safety. And sometimes it costs more money, but we're never doing that without a kind of direction from the federal or the state authorities or engineers that are required to investigate all this. Thank you for joining us for this video. If you're interested in following this project or other projects we're building, or interested in learning more about building science, please consider subscribing as we help you build a better way.